So we'll be thankful. Thank you for this day, Spirit. Thank you for this day. Don't know what. Somebody's been playing with the electronics. Right there. You never knew when you came to church there'd be sound effects. And comedy. All right, let's try that again. Good morning, everyone. I'm Reverend Cece Coltrane, and welcome to Center for Spiritual Living, Greater Dayton. If this is your first time here, we extend a special welcome to you and. And thank you for spending your morning with us. We'd very much appreciate it if you would fill out that little contact strip, that, that little piece that tears off the bulletin cover with your contact information. We will not abuse it at all. We will send you a thank you for being here note and um, add you to our Wednesday, uh, which is usually on Wednesday, but this week was on Thursday, a uh, spiritual pick-me-up that I spend, send out a little short paragraph every week just reminding people to uh, remember who they are. You can unsubscribe from that at any time if you, if you don't want to get it. Uh, but it also just helps us to be able to stay in touch with you and let you know about special events that are coming up. Giving our reading and invocation this morning is Becky Victor. Our vigil holder is Judy Nussmacher. And Becky and Lenza Smith will be offering the interface candle lighting, which we do every week just to remind us that there is wisdom and truth to be had in every religious tradition that we can use to make our own lives better. And the kids are with Mark Fowler and Tom Singh today. So as they make their way over to Mr. Mark, let's just do a quick blessing for them, shall we? Come on, he doesn't bite, I promise. I'm not so sure about that. He's wonderful. You guys are going to have a good time. He's a fun guy. So let's just remember that God is expressing through these children in such beautiful and transparent and crystal-like ways. They are so clear to the beauty of life. And they are our great teachers. They remind us that joy is everywhere and that spontaneity and fun are so necessary. We give great thanks for their presence. We bless them on their way today, knowing that all that they do makes them even more vibrantly alive. And we say thank you. And so it is. Have a wonderful time, guys. We love you. So if you haven't already done so, we've been asking people to fill out a contact information card. There's some over at the Welcome Center. Um, we're just trying to make sure our records are accurate and active so that uh, uh, they have some semblance to reality. That would really help us out a lot. It's, it's really difficult sometimes when you have several people in sequence, you know, one employee after another, sort of maintaining records, and we're never quite sure. Um, anyway, it's confusing, so help us out. <laughs> uh, join us for the Mandala Workshop on October 7th. There's a flyer in your bulletin about it. You will go home with a mandala that you create yourself sort of freehand. It's an amazing experience because I am no artist, but it came out beautifully. Plus a book and a workbook and um, about a thousand ideas for the spiritual practice of creating mandalas. It's wonderful. It's sacred geometry and it sort of involves mind, body, and spirit. So it's a really wonderful thing. And Kathy Roush, who is the facilitator, is amazing. You will really have a good time with her. She does need a count for materials. We have several weeks to, to finalize that count, but you can pre-register over on the bulletin board at the Welcome Center. There's a suggested love offering of $40 or so, but the books are worth $29, so it's a great deal. So sign up for it. There's also another workshop coming up in three weeks. One of our senior ministerial students from Chicago, Russ Laguerre, is going to speak and offer a workshop called Set Your Whole Self 
free. So don't miss Russ. He's pretty special. I mean that in a good way, not as in, you know what I mean. He's a spectacular human being. Let me put it that way. Foundations class starts this Tuesday, September 11th. If you haven't taken it before, you will want to. It is the place where you begin to ground yourself in your own customized spiritual practice. And it teaches you how to change some of those deeply rooted thinking patterns that get in the way of what we want to be and how we want to express ourselves. And it also gives you some lasting spiritual friends in your classmates. And it's a really good deal. It's only $145 for 10 weeks. You can pay every week if you want. So sign up over at the Welcome Center so that we can get your, your class materials ready for you. Um, I have a special request of you today. Um, later in the service, we'll have an opportunity to support the center in its work. And, uh, and I'm going to ask you to dig just a little deeper today. The summer dip in attendance has uh, translated into a pretty large dip in cash flow, and we're sort of in a place of untenability at the moment. So if you're able to give an extra 10 or 20 or $50, please do so. Uh, we would so appreciate it. Um, it's, we're just trying to make sure all of our staff get paid, you know what I mean? <laughs> Lastly, our practitioners are going to be here after the service to pray with you about anything that might be going on in your life where you could use some extra support, where you, maybe you're having a little bit of a difficult time seeing the spiritual truth. This is their gift to you on Sunday, so they will be more than and more than happy to pray with you after the service. It's their gift to you with deep love on Sundays. Bye. Kelly. Um, hi, sorry, just a quick announcement. We're having a social green meeting um, at noon in the community room. We're going to plan some fun um, fall activities and holiday activities. So if you want to get involved in that and help us, uh, and have input on some of the activities we're going to do, feel free to join us back at noon in the community room. And if you want to get involved later, uh, my name and number is on the back of the book. Thank you. It's Kelly O'Keefe, and the meeting is all the way in the back. It's the farthest as you go all the way down the hall into the room with the uh, red door with stars on it. You'll yeah. find you're, you're in the right place. So now it's time for some music. Lieutenant Dan is going to sing for us a song called Dive Right In. So we light the first candle in honor of Islam. At every moment a person must feel Allah's existence and closeness and pray. For only someone who is cognizant of Allah's existence acknowledges the meaning and importance of prayer. Prayer is an intimate and personal bond between people and Allah. We light the second candle in honor of Judaism. Prayer, what the Talmud calls the labor of the heart, is answerable to the heart alone. We light the third candle in honor of Christianity. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God, and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds. We light the fourth candle in honor of Sikhism. Prayer remains an active yearning of the soul to feed one with God, or to feel one with God, <coughs> who is always active and patient, who is always hopeful. Prayer should therefore refresh our spirit and make us ready to do God's will. This can be done if we first commune ourselves with the God revealed in history and reverently watch the organic growth of divinity in humankind. We light the fifth candle in honor of Buddhism. When we feel disconnected and afraid, we long for the comfort and peace that comes from belonging to something larger and more powerful. While prayer may suggest a dualism of self and other, in my experience, when we fully inhabit our longing, it can carry <coughs> us to the tender and compassionate presence that is our own awakened nature. We light the sixth candle in honor of Native American religions. May the stars carry your sadness away, and may the flowers fill your heart with beauty. 
May hope forever wipe away your tears, and above all, may silence make you strong. And we light the final candle in honor of African traditional spiritual traditions. In the beginning was God. Today is God. Tomorrow will be God. Who can imagine, who can make an image of God? God has no body. God is the word which comes out of your mouth. That word. It is no more. It is past and it still lives. So is God. And so for September's theme, it's around spiritual mind treatment and the feeling. Today's topic is about divine ideas. And it is from the reading of one uh, from Ernest Holmes. We must know that the doorway of opportunity is never closed. Humans are always receptive to the divine ideas. It is never too late for us to manifest opportunity. It is never withheld from us for a single moment. There is no sense of limited or restricted opportunity. It is not enough to state that God is limitless. For though this abstract statement is undoubtedly true, no concrete manifestation of it can take place until you specifically designate that it is taking place. Now take these words and let them rest within your being for the next few moments. So as we open our hearts to this moment, to this experience, we are called to remember that which is ours to remember and to bring forth in this time. For we are blessed and we are blessings and we bring it to this moment, to this experience, as we are fed, as we are nurtured, and as we come together to do the same for one another. We bless this community for the opportunity that gives us to learn and to grow and to discover yet again more of who it is that we are to expand and discover and understand. And it is beautiful, for we are beautiful. And so I know that the message of this experience today is that which touched the hearts of each of us, the minds of each of us, and the ways that are most profound for us. I know that our minister, Reverend Cece, comes forth to speak that which has called her forth to teach, to share. And in honoring that and feeling fulfilled in that, she too allows us to do the same through the words that she speaks. And together we say, and so it is. <coughs> We're having major electronic issues up here. So we are talking about um, the feeling behind prayer, behind the spiritual practice of prayer. When we talked about it last week a little bit, and um, you know, it's the same feeling behind any spiritual practice that we do. The feeling we seek in meditation, or visioning, or prayer is, or in service, or in generosity, or in whatever it is that we're doing, a compassionate act, is the feeling of oneness, the feeling that we're all interconnected. I think that's what we're all seeking. Um, uh, we're connected with the rest of life, and and all spiritual practice is is aimed at opening opening us up to that, because it's the oneness, it's the sense of oneness that heals us. It's the sense of oneness that really changes us. It's the sense of oneness where we discover heaven, that state of mind called heaven. And, and you know, I was thinking about this this morning, um, 
and it occurred to me that, that oneness is what all human beings have been seeking forever. That recognition, that feeling of oneness. Um, we've been seeking it because it's where we come from. And, and our human experience makes us forget that, but there's this part of us that doesn't, and it keeps trying to get us to recognize that we've never been separate. And spiritual practice is simply about remembering that we're not. That we're not separate and alone, we're, we're interconnected with all that is. It's about feeling the connection to the divine that's really always there. And last week, or sometime, last week or the week before, um, we talked about how you can't teach the feeling, you can only experience it, right? So all that can, any spiritual teacher or any spiritual past can teach is the form. And we do teach form. We teach the five steps of affirmative prayer. We teach how to sit mindfully and watchfully in meditation. We teach how to break the strictures that we put around our consciousness in visioning. We teach how to go deep in sacred reading and contemplation, stuff like that. It's the form that brings us to the threshold of the experience. And then it's the feeling that takes us through the doorway. And the feeling reminds us, as our founder Ernest Holmes said in today's reading, that that doorway, that doorway, doorway of opportunity, as he called it, is never closed. It's never closed. We're always receptive somewhere in our being to the divine. And what we do through prayer is, in other spiritual practices, is bring that receptivity up into our conscious awareness. So it's not just knowing it somewhere, it's experiencing it in our intellects and in, our, our, uh, or in the full breadth of our consciousness. The rest of that reading from uh, Living the Science of Mind goes like this. He says, we pray to know that the one being prayed for, whether that's ourselves or someone else, we pray to know that the one being prayed for is at the doorway of limitless opportunity, forever expanding in experience. Everywhere we go, a new and better opportunity for self-expression opens before us. We are compelled to recognize this opportunity and to act intelligently upon it. Our imagination is continuously increasing. New ideas to come to us every day, and we know how to execute these ideas. To me, that sounds like we pray to tap into the divine current, if you will. All the mystics ever have said that our needs and our wants are met if we tap into this divine current. And the currency of the divine current is ideas. We pray for better relationship, and all of a sudden we have an idea about what we could do to make the relationship better. We pray for a better job, and all of a sudden, something comes to us, whether it's a, something we need to do with our resumes, or a little bit of training we could get, or someone to call that we didn't think about before, about maybe a better job, and, and we have an idea, and we follow up on it. Um, we pray for better health, and we come to the notion that maybe we should change the way we're eating, or get more exercise, or check out a different medical practitioner, or whatever it is. You know, that whatever it is, it comes to us as an idea. Everywhere we go, a new and better opportunity for self-expression opens before us. We are compelled to recognize it, and to act intelligently upon it. Our imagination is continuously increasing. New ideas come to us every day, and we know how to execute these ideas. Once we realize that the divine doesn't deal in utility bills, but in ideas, the divine doesn't deal in miraculous overnight loss of 50 pounds, <laughs> but in ideas, I read somewhere that what women really want is to be able to eat whatever they want and not gain weight. It's probably true. Anyway. <laughs> when we begin to understand that, that, that spirit deals in ideas, not 
not parting the waters, but in the idea that comes to us as to how we can part the waters. That's the currency of the divine, is those divine ideas, the doorway of opportunity that's never closed. And the thing that gets us through the door, across the threshold, is the deep knowing that on the other side, through the door, is limitless possibility. That's what lives there, if you will. Once we walk through the door of the wall we've built, we step into limitless possibility. It's this feeling of awe that we get as we approach that doorway and realize what's on the other side. I subscribe to this wonderful Jewish blog called Sinai and Synapses. I love that. It's a great blog site. And I, and I read this blog about awe that I want to share with you because it was so perfect for me. Uh, the woman wrote, awe has two really important key features. The first is that it's evoked by something vast. It can be something metaphysical or metaphorical or physically vast. The canonical example is the Grand Canyon or the limits of the universe, which we went to last week. Something that is so grand but it can also be invoked by somebody who has a great power, like a very powerful and inspiring leader. But the second aspect of awe, which is what I think makes it really interesting to conversations of science and religion, is that it triggers processes of accommodation. We feel awe when there is some sort of stimulus, like the vastness of the universe, that doesn't readily fit into our existing mental scheme. So we need to accommodate what we know in order to make sense of that new information. And this can sometimes mean we have to rewrite what we know about the world to make sense of something. Awe requires us to rewrite the way we think about our lives, about the world, which is why it opens up that doorway for us, because we have to stop and consider that in this limitless universe that is expanding outward at the speed of light, there really are no limits. And we have to let the awe move us into that place of limitlessness. We have to, uh, when we take time to connect with that and with all that is, and we let ourselves feel the immensity of the power that we sit in the middle of, that, that is our very lives. We have to rethink, we have to accommodate that bigness in ourselves. There's another person I ran into on that same blog, Sinai and Synapses. His name is Pekko Sinervo, and he's a particle physicist. And he wrote this great piece called Confessions of a Jewish Particle Physicist. He said, I'm in awe of this world every, each and every day. I'm reminded of the incredible complexity of the universe, whether it's in the diversity of galaxies and cosmic structures, how the universe forged the heavier elements that make up this rocky ball called planet Earth, or how biological life formed the, developed into such intricate, intricate forms as we see all around us in this room. He captured that for me because that's how I feel when I let myself think about this limitless universe that I live in and that lives in me. When we feel our oneness with all of that, then yes, we have to rewrite our view of our lives. We then get bigger, right? We have to accommodate somehow the vastness of this thing called spirit. Then we step across the threshold and we move from fear and doubt and pain into limitlessness. And when we take that step, we do so remembering that what lets us actualize that limitless possibility are the ideas that we have that come to us in the middle of our meditation, in the answer to a prayer, as the result of our visioning we stand right in the middle of that infinite possibility and watch it become real in our lives. That's what happens. And I really think that's what Jesus meant when he was teaching those kind of slow, 
blinkered disciples of his, and he said, stop worrying about the details of your lives. Stop worrying about your clothes and the food you're going to eat. Start seeking the kingdom of heaven, which is not over there somewhere or over there somewhere. It is right here within you. And when we seek that space, then and, and then it's easy to step across that threshold. It's, it's, it's easy enough to be bold enough to just take the step. And, and then we discover that, yes, our needs are met through the currency of the divine ideas that begin to come to us one after the other after the other. And I think one of the problems that we have as human beings is we want to see the whole path laid out all the way to the end. We want it to be a straight and clear shot from A to Z, right? It's not the way it works. It's just not. That's how we want it to work. But what happens is we're given the idea we need to take action on right now. And then we get some more ideas. And we go a little farther and we get some more ideas. And eventually we find ourselves at Z. But we don't get to see the whole thing laid out. That's how we want it to be. But nothing big enough to be worthy of you is ever going to show up in a straight line like that. Bigger things take steps. It's a process, right? Our real selves, our divine selves, know that. And they're standing there going, get on with it. Come on, let's go, let's go, let's go. And the ego self is saying, you can't do that. What do you know? You don't know what's around that bend? You can't see more than five feet in front of you. Well, you can't go forward with that. So part of our spiritual practice is to build faith in understanding that, that as, as uh, uh, Martin Luther King says, you don't have to see, see the whole staircase. You just have to see the first step and take it, right? Part of our spiritual practice is building that faith. And we build faith by reminding ourselves every day that this whole deal is limitless. We are in the middle of a universe that is so vast we, still, we can't even comprehend it now. And it's expanding itself at the speed of light in all directions. Ooh, it's amazing. In the final section of his book, The Science of Mind, Ernest Holmes has all these great meditations. Most of us skip that part. When we're in class, we never read it, right? We just read the assigned parts, and we look at the metaphysical charts in the background, and we skip all that other stuff. There's some really good stuff in there. The language might be a little funky, but it works for me. Uh, it certainly worked for Ernest Holmes, who was a mystic, and he wanted, he wanted that transcendent awe, oh, but he also wanted the intimacy that comes of having a personal I-thou relationship with God. And, and he wrote this one, and I use it a lot. He says, O spirit of human and God within me, thy power is great, and thy knowledge goes beyond the range of human experience. Thy wisdom exceeds that of all else, and beside thee there is no other. In thy strength do I daily walk and live. In thy presence do I rest in peace and joy. Spirit within me and without, thou art powerful. And great and wonderful is thy might, and complete is thy understanding. I let thy mighty strength flow through me and out into all the paths of my human endeavors. Life from within expresses through me. Like I said, if the language doesn't work for you, you can rewrite it, or you can find something else that reminds you on a daily basis that what's happening here is... The whole universe is flowing through you. You are the place it shows up as you. And nobody else can do that but you. And you can't do me. I have to show up and let the universe show up through me and as me. And every one of us does, right? It's something that you kind of imbibe every day just to get you started on the path of your human endeavors in a different way, in that, in that place of awe. Something that reminds you that there's great wisdom and power and peace and knowledge working through you. Whether your human brain can pick it up or not. That great power and wisdom is the source of those great ideas that we have. 
and the rest of the divine ideas percolate up when we're ready to hear them. That's why it doesn't all get laid out from, from A to Z. We, we forget the steps, right? They come when we need them. We take this one, and then another one comes, and we proceed. And as I suggested recently, one of the ways we can do this is to choose to allow everything that happens after we let the prayer go, after we say, and so it is. Let everything that happens be part of the answer to the prayer. If we pray for a better job, then we've got to pay attention to those little ideas that come up. When something says, fix your resume, you go, yeah, yeah, later. Right? When something says, Call Joe Smith. I think he's got, you know, there might be something there for you. You go, yeah, maybe. We don't do it. We don't follow through. When we follow through, and then we pick up on the next idea that is there for our guidance, we just keep repeating it until we get where we want to go. And it is not always a linear path. It's almost never a linear path. It's certainly a dark one except for the first few feet, most often, but it's also not linear, so it, it, that bugs us too. <laughs> we want it to be linear, but when we take a zig or a zag, we just have to stop and remind ourselves that that's the way it is. That's the way this whole thing works. I don't know about you, but if I just thought 20, 20 years ago even, and I've been here for 13, 20 years ago, someday I'm going to be standing in front of a group of people talking about spiritual truth, I would have gone, no. That's not going to happen. Life happens to us in, in very interesting ways. But this is the one, one of the few times I was not the queen of half-baked half follow-through was when I got that idea that I should go to ministerial school. I went, yeah, yeah. Oh, it took me a minute to get to that point. First I went, no. But when I let it fully in, I went, yeah. And I went home and did my application. And they said, come for a, a, an entry interview. So I went and did that. And the next thing I know, I was registered for classes. And I walked into the first class and went, yeah, this is great. I love this. Usually, I'm the person who says, fix your resume. Yeah, later. <laughs> I am the queen of half-baked fo follow-through. I understand it. But I have to tell you, sometimes I catch myself. And I say, the reason I'm in this particular blind corner over here is because I did not follow through. These divine ideas require, they, re they require of us, our best shot, right? And if we're taking our best shot every time we get an idea that's leading us in the direction we want to go, we'll get there. If, we, if we're half-baked, we might very well find ourselves in a blind corner, and that's okay. We just go back. Say, what is it now I'm supposed to be doing? And what is it I'm supposed to be doing with my full attention? Oh yeah, I think I'll do that. Then we're back on the path again. We have to sometimes stop and realize that um, the best chance we have of getting from here to where we want to be is to follow those urgings that come, not as a result of spiritual practice, but because of spiritual practice nonetheless, because spiritual practice is what opens us up to being able to hear them and feel them and see them. So it's the answer to the prayer. It's the thing that happens in the middle of a meditation that says, do this. It's the, the picture we receive in visioning or the open-heartedness we get when we're in, in the middle of a piece of compassionate action. That is us becoming aware that we're receiving something from that larger wisdom that God is. It's us realizing we're always tapping in at some level to the limitlessness that God is. So, so let's be in awe. Let's be in awe of life and realize that even though we go A, B, C, D, E, F, G, whoops, H, we're still headed in the right direction. We're still going where we want to go. And trust in that. Let us remember that what's happening is that we are moving along a path 
that is wise and deep and rich and we will come to the end of it knowing things we never thought we'd know, doing things we never thought we'd do. Because what we're doing the whole way, step by step, is building faith in the infinite wisdom that already lives within us. It's always pouring into us. And we're building our perseverance and our willingness to perceive and act on those ideas until we get to where we're going. So I want to close with, uh, I've been on this Jewish street today and I realized it's because t tonight opens Rosh Hashanah. And I want to close with the Rosh Hashanah prayer. Hayom harat olam. Hayom harat olam. Today is the birthday of the world. This, this, you can hear this as a literal declaration of the new year, but it's also a call to remember that each one of us participates in creation every single day, every single day. When we make a choice about how we want to live in the world, when we choose to say yes to that divine idea and follow it through, we are giving birth to the world. So we make that choice, we listen to the divine idea, we follow its guidance, and we create something wonderful. So let's join together right now in a moment of <coughs> opening up to that oneness, to that all that is. Ah, that which is breathing our breath is the breath of the universe. And that which is us breathing is likewise the breath of the universe. For there is only this one, this one life, this one breath, this one mind, this one infinite wisdom, this one eternally, unconditionally loving presence that is everywhere, that is always acting, that moves in and through and as all its creation, including me and including everyone right here in this room. And we have evolved to the point where we are conscious of this presence and its, and its existence in us and as us and through us and all around us. We are conscious of its voice in our own heads and minds and hearts. We are conscious that we are one with all that is. And as we breathe in that consciousness, the only appropriate response is awe because it is so vast, it is so powerful, it is so filled with limitless possibility. The only response is, oh wow. And that awe causes us to open up a little bit wider to realize that it is that power, that limitless, the limitlessness that flows through us into all that we do. It is, it is us when we pray, it is us when we meditate, it is us when we breathe, it is us when we love, it is us when we give, it is us when we do anything at all. So our choice today is to use that infinite, limitless power to make our own lives better, but also to give birth to a world that works for everyone. And all of our thinking and being and feeling and doing and speaking heads in that direction. And while the path may not be straight and while the path may not be well lit all the way, it is the path. It is truly the path to bringing heaven down to earth, to allowing the heaven that exists within each one of us out into the world. Because I know this to be true about us. I give thanks. I give great thanks for this opportunity we have had to simply stop and remember who we are, to celebrate together this amazing thing called life, to be grateful for one another and for life itself. To remember what all the mystics tell us. That truly, truly, we are beloved. So from this place of deep gratitude, I just let all this go. I know that it, I don't have to do anything. All I have to do is say, and so it is, and it is done. 
For there is this power and presence in the universe that supports us in all we do. We step across the threshold. We say yes. And we say together. And so it is. <coughs> for being your beautiful, clear, transparent, tra radiant selves this morning. It's great to have you all, and, and I appreciate your being here. And thanks to our ushers and greeters, our practitioners, the welcome team, the Higher Mind Band. Yeah, guys. 
and all of us for getting up this morning and getting here. Yay! Yes. Have a wonderful, absolutely wonderful day. You know, enjoy the rain. Take, take some time for you. Do something really nice for yourself. So let's stand for our closing affirmation and our closing song, which is Holy Ground. Am I correct? Good. Sometimes it gets changed, and I don't know. So, so please repeat after me. Today I step across the threshold. Today I step across the threshold into limitless possibility. Into limitless possibilities. I am open to receive the divine ideas. I am open to receive the divine ideas. The ideas I need to grow and prosper. The ideas I need to grow and prosper. To live in joy. To live in joy. I am grateful. I am grateful. And so it is. And so it is. Have a really good week. <laughs>